you are about to enter about to enter open your eyes open your eyes open your mind open your mind open your heart your heart it is time to reveal to reveal time to unlock time to unlock time to listen and hear the truth the secret mysteries, the secret mysteries hidden, agendas, hidden agendas, dark cabal, dark cabal, all come to light. Come to light. Come to light. Behold, behold, hot come, hot come. My name is Salim Siddiqui, and this is the strangest story you have ever heard. There can be only one. Well, of course, the idea that there can be only one. This is what we all understand and have always known. So let's talk about this concept of ascension and how it relates to the many that came before us. There's a misunderstanding amongst the people between spiritual and physical ascension. Now, of course, is it possible to ascend? How do you ascend? Normally, people, how do they ascend? <laughs> well, my name's Salim Siddiqui, and you're listening to Hot Conflict, and the truth and the reality is, you die, <laughs> brothers and sisters. Death, death, the true reality, the unavoidable, the calamitous, the end, that, the ceasing of all the trivial matters of your existence, death. That which you should ponder and think about oft, if you are a true spiritual warrior, believer, death, that this process has an ending. This process does not go on forever. There is death. Death has always been the door to ascension, brothers and sisters. Spiritual ascension always occurs when the soul reached that faded moment when their spirit was supposed to leave their body. Now, of course, not all deaths are the same, right? Whether you ascend or not is <laughs> totally up to you. Because death, like all things, there are two possible ways for this outcome to turn. You could be, hopefully, one who ascends after death, and not one who descends into the darkness. So the idea that there was a world and an afterlife has always been known and always been understood. But that death was the doorway to spiritual ascension, to the leaving of this world, to giving up of the physical realities for the spiritual. For something that is greater than and more than the physical world. And so ascension for all of existence has always been a certain way, spiritually, the leaving of the third dimensional realm. And when we talk about ascension and we talk about some of the concepts, of course, one of the uh, most notable examples we take is right out of the book of Enoch, out of the story. For those of you who are fans of the hotconflict.com video series on the website, from Stories of Truth and the Unseen World, we talk about the concept of Enoch, or Idris in Arabic. Now, many of you know we like to talk about different quotes and sources, and so we're quoting from the Book of Enoch, one of the books that did not get canonized by the Constantinian Council, or the Council of Nicaea in the early 300s. Chapter 19, verse 1, And thence those men took me, and bore me up onto the sixth heaven. And there I saw seven bands of angels, very bright and very glorious, and their faces shining more than the sun shining, glistening, and there is no difference in their faces, or behavior, or manner of dress, and these make the orders, and learn the goings of the stars, and the alternation of the moon, or revolution of the sun, and the good government of the world. And when they see evil doing, they make commandments and instructions, and sweet and loud singing, and all songs of praise. These are the archangels who are above angels, measure all life in heaven and on earth, 
and the angels who are appointed over seasons and years. The angels who are over rivers and sea, and who are over the fruits of the earth, and the angels who are over every grass, giving food to all, to every living thing, and the angels who write all the souls of men, and all their deeds, and their lives before the Lord's face. In their midst are six phoenixes, and six cherubim, and six six-winged ones continually with one voice, singing one voice, and it is not possible to describe their singing, and they rejoice before the Lord at his footstool. Well, of course, the first three verses from chapter 19 of the famous book of Enoch, where Enoch himself talks about being taken up into the sixth heaven. So let's talk about the concept of ascension and talk about the story as we understand it. Well, my name is Salim Siddiqui, so from the Islamic point of view, we understand that Enoch is not experiencing ascension. Well, of course, he's ascending into the heavens. So how could he not be ascending? He is declaring that he went up. Well, in our understanding, in our modern day and age, we would call that an abduction. As Enoch describes in the Bible, chariots of fire from the skies descending to literally pick him up. He says, even in this reference, those men took me and bore me up, meaning at his level in the story of the sons and daughters of Adam, of Cain and Abel and those who made it. Idris, Enoch, was the first to be taken up into the heavens, taken up, of course, ascending into the skies. But what does that mean? Performing a physical ascension? Yes, he's being energized. He's being beamed up by beings in the higher levels, by angels and angelics. But that is different from ascending spiritually and letting go of the physical realm or the concepts of physical ascension that we'll see later on. This is more like an abduction scenario, but it's not being done against his will. He is wanting to be taken up. He is the first to be exposed to the higher realms. And he is taken to see the angels and their glorious shining faces and the glisteningness of their behavior, their manners, their dress. They are the ones who make the orders. Now we know Allah has created the angels and the jinns, and the angels obey the orders of Allah and do not disobey. They follow the commandments of Allah in the goings on of the stars, the alternation or alteration of the moon, the revolution of the sun, and the good government of the world. Enoch, the first scribe, the first writer, the knowledgeable one of the word and its written form. He says the angels see evil doing and they make commandments and instruction, singing sweet and loud the praises of the Lord. As we know, the angels repeat the commands of Allah. The archangels above them take all the measure of heaven and earth and appoint over the seasons and the elementals and the rivers and oceans and lands and fruits and grass. Every little, little thing is by the command of Allah and there is angels appointed over it. Every blade of grass, every drop of rain, every thought and deed of the sons and daughters of Adam. Upon him are two scribes writing their deeds. Six phoenixes, six cherubim, six six-winged ones, continually one voice singing, one voice. The concept that those who are of the true light and heart will join in one, and that those who oppose will join in darkness upon the false understanding, the yin-yang, the light and dark of the six-six-six, the concepts of the beasts. And those singing the true praises and glory of their Lord, they will find their hearts beating and vibrating, and they seek to be raised up 
to join the Lord at his footstool. The footstool? The kursi. I saw kursi. <laughs> well, a mystical, magical reference, but I'm talking about the concept that the description of what Enoch sees is the description of the mastery that he is being taught. He is being taught by the angels, the going on of the stars, the alteration of the moon, the revolution of the sun, good government. He is being taught how to make the commandments and instructions by seeing the example of the angels. He is being taught how to sing loudly the praises. He is being taught the measure of heaven and earth. He, the son of Adam, is being taught the appointment over the seas and the years and the rivers and the oceans and the fruits and the angels. He is being taught how to scribe, how to write down and instruct the first of the sons and daughters of Adam raised to be taught the ways of heaven and earth, a noble, honorable status to ascend into the heavens, to be taken physically, to be raised up physically, to be shown the first of our people, the organization and the fundamentals of the way the structure of the higher heavens works. That is much, much different to becoming the one man who performs the physical ascension. On every world, on every planet, there can be only one, one who is the first to do this. One who is the first to show the way. One who is the first to light that path. You're listening to Hot Conflict. My name's Salim Siddiqui. We're talking about the spirit and the ascension and the physical ascension and the changes of the light body and the question of whether you are a man born for something great or something more, Khalifatullah, the Lord's vice gerent upon the physical third dimension, and that this world, like many worlds before, is experiencing a change, but this world is going to experience it unlike any other, an awakening between the man and the beast. Call in your question, 760 Eight two five zero nine four nine. Talking about man and beast, the spiritual and the supernatural, light and dark, the ebbs and flows of time and fate. For all of this has happened, and all of this will happen again. You have the right to take yourself out of it, take yourself out of the cycle, out of the struggle, out of the regurgitating flow of intake and outtake, the intake and the outtake of the breath and the seas and the tides, to reach for something higher. We call it the light. Oh, my brethren. I am your brother, Salim. Join us on this journey. HotConflict.com You are listening to Hot Conflict Radio. Common live every Thursday night, midnight, 12 a.m. Eastern. Call in to get your questions and comments live on the air. Dial into the show by phone, 760-825-0949. Dial in from the site on Blog Talk Radio using Skype or through a regular phone calling in at 760-825-0949. That's 760-825-0949. Get your questions and comments live on the air talking about the weird and the wild, the strange and the supernatural, things that go bump in the night. Get on hotconflict.com. 